Wurzag, the Great Green Prophet, one of the OG Warhammer 1 lords that still is going strong in Mortal Empires in Warhammer 2. This is going to be a guide to his campaign and how to start it strong, with a bit of a step-by-step -step guide, so if you struggle with campaigns you can follow this to at least get off to a good start. So Wurzag starting in the Badlands, as always, usual Greenskins mechanics, the war, the underway, his unique deal is that he gets some buffs to Savage Orcs and reduced cost of all Savage Orc units, which can lead to some pretty fun armies. I myself am a big fan of Savage Orcs and this might be my favourite campaign actually. And I'm going to do this on very hard, hard on. So very hard I choose because legendary usually feels a little bit too cheaty for my enjoyment. And then battles I put on hard because I used to play on very hard but I found it quite frustrating because they get so much extra leadership and you get less that even Skaven slaves are like dwarfs. They're nearly unbreakable. And no matter what tactics you pull, if you flank them, you hammer and anvil them, you hit them with all the leadership debuffs, they'll still hold on. And it's just kind of not that fun. So very hard, hard is a good point for me, I think. If you play on this or anything less, this guide should be fine. If you play on legendary, then you probably don't need a guide. So straight into Wurzag's campaign. This is a pretty easy start overall, I think, but it is a campaign that can go in many different directions and go wrong in many ways also as well. So there is a bit of luck involved, but it also depends what you do and when. So we start off with our one little region of Ekron. We want to try and take the province first of all, as always. So that is what we're going to look to do. We're going to put our little hero into Wurzag's army, although we're not going to leave him there because we've already got Wurzag as a caster, so we don't really need two casters in the army. We'll use him as an agent later on. And I'm going to construct the obedience building to get that public order up. We're going to get that nice and early. That can go all the way up to tier four as well, so we can do that. Could take this to upgrade to get some arrow boys, but we're not going to bother with that just yet. First order of business is to come and take Dragonhorn Mine. So we're going to boogie on down there. And this might look like a little bit of an intimidating fight if you're new to the game, but it's really not so hard. We've got Savage Orcs. They've mostly got Goblins, which aren't too scary. But if we auto-resolve, we're going to get a Pyrrhic victory and probably lose a lot of boys. So we are going to fight this and try to minimize our casualties as much as possible. I'm going to have my missiles up front, and I am going to charge those boys into melee just to absorb some of the charges. We do have a ranged advantage early as well. Savage Orc Arrow Boys have more range than Goblin Archers. So be sure to make use of that. Try and use up all of the ammo that you can and try and draw them into coming to attack you as they will play the defensive because you've attacked them. Get the cav ready to come around the flank and get behind them. And we're going to try to protect our Savage Orcs from taking charges. So we're going to use our Savage Orc Arrow Boys to charge in and absorb some charges. We're going to charge the Giant in. We're going to use Wurzag. And they're going to try and stop any charges from our Savage Orc Boys because ideally we'd like them to get their charge but not take a charge in return. Use the Wurzag's Brain Burster if you get a nice clump of troops. That can do some good work. Get that cab coming in from the flank. So just try to stop the charges, mostly from the Orc Boys. You don't want to take Orc Boy charges, preferably. Doesn't matter too much if our Arab Boys get a little bit beaten up. They can still do work even if they are beaten up in future fights. Whereas the Savage Orcs, we want to try and keep as healthy as possible. Just try to get behind them and try to break their leadership more than anything. They're only gobos, so they don't last very long. Once we've done that, we're going to occupy this, and our army should be nicely replenishing. We didn't lose too much, so we're going to be nearly back at full strength after this turn. That's nice. That means we can keep on rolling to our next objective without having to wait for replenishment. Going to recruit three more Savage Orcs here as well. Make sure you do that before you end the turn so we can keep our army growing. And we've got a few things we can construct in Dragonhorn Mine. We're going to go with the Growth Building to try and get Ekrand to level 3. I do like building the Garrison Buildings in these settlements. It does help keep them safe as this campaign goes on. But for now, I think we'll save the money. But you maybe could build the Income Building there to help you out. But for now, I think that's fine. So that's our army moved, our army done. Our settlements have been upgraded. We've got some research to do. There's two to go for first. Go bigger, we're going to do first, and then we're going to do go faster. That's campaign movement range and growth. Both good to take early. Check diplomacy. There's not really too much we can do. We're friendly with Grimgore, which is going to be important. And we do have quite a lot of enemies, but it's not a big deal. Most of them are to the north. You don't really have to worry about the south too much in this campaign, at least early on. So mostly we're focusing on the north. Got my little Goblin Shaman, we're going to use him as an agent, so I'm going to upgrade him in that way. Moving on to the next turn, we're now going to be ready to move west, trying to find the leader of the Greenskins faction nearby, the Teeth Snatchers or whatever they're called. Oh, that might be him there. Grizz Guts Gut Stabber. Let's have a look. If we double click him, we can go and see that he is indeed the leader of the Teeth Snatchers. And Greenskins have the mechanic where if you beat the faction leader in a battle, you'll then be able to confederate that entire faction. And that's what we're going to go for. 
We can recruit a few more units as well. We've just about got enough money to do so. I'm going to go for goblins. You could go for the savage orcs here for about the same price. So most people will probably want to do that. For me, I like having variety in my army. And also goblins are pretty good with their silver shield for chasing off missile units and skirmish missile units. Whereas savage orcs might just get shot up. Going to upgrade my growth building here as well. And then on to the next turn. Now, lucky for us, Grizzguts has stayed put. He hasn't run off anywhere. And this can be one of the quite big variables. Sometimes he'll be back at his settlement. Here he's run just away, but I think we'll still be in range, just about. We're going to get a hold of him, and it's going to be an easy win. And we're going to bonk him on the head. And that should be a faction confederation for us, which mostly just saves us a bit of time. The settlements that we're going to gain from this, we could take anyway. And one of them we probably don't really want to take, but we'll have it. And if we lose it to rebellion, then whatever. We don't really want to get peace with them in any way because they still have one of the settlements that we need to complete our first province. So we're going to go for the confederation so that we can get that. And then we only need one more settlement to get that first province done. So we gained two new settlements with that confederation. One of them isn't a great deal of use to us, Granti Mingal. You can try and hold on to it though. It gives a little bit of income as it does have a port, but it's not drastically important. Like I said, hold on to it, upgrade it a little bit if you like, give it some public order. If it gets rebellion and raised, it's not a big deal. If you raise it now, you run the risk that the border princes will come over and take it, and then they'll have a foothold on your side of the Badlands, and that's just a bit of a pain in the ass later on potentially, so good to hold on to it yourself for as long as possible. Maybe put the garrison building there as well later on. And then we're going to start to move back towards the central area of our province. We gained a few new nice buildings here, more unit buildings. We can get a little bit of cav now, which is going to be helpful, and also some nasty skulkers, Arab boys. That'll lead us to Black Orcs and stuff eventually if we want them. But now we're going to turn our attention to Stone Mine Tower, the last settlement we need to complete this province. On to the next turn, I found the Scabby Eye making a move towards my settlement. So we're going to move nearby it and go into ambush and try and catch them out. Hopefully they'll fall for it and we can take them out nice and easy, but we'll have to see what they do. This is another area where they may not do this in your campaign. They may do something else. They may be stationed at Stone Mine Tower, which we want to take, which could make life a little bit harder. You'll have to kind of adjust for the variables. We'll see what they do on this turn, though. Are they going to come at me? They might fall into the ambush. We might fail the ambush. We should be able to beat them pretty comfortably, though. They probably don't have a great army. They've fallen back. Okay, that's good. And they haven't gone to Stone Mine Tower, so that's nice. We can start to move there, hopefully as quickly as possible, and try to take that before they get over there. And as you can see, I've recruited a few more units. I've got some wolf riders, so I can get behind and harass missiles and things like that. Got a few extra savage orcs. Bit of stone mines a bit vulnerable here to that army that they've got, but that's okay. To our next bit of research, I'm probably going to go for heavy metal, which gives some buffs to orcs, armor and weapon strength, as my army is mostly orcs. This is incredibly useful. On to the next turn. So they have gone to Stone Mine Tower. One of their armies, one of the Scabby Eye armies, has gone to Stone Mine Tower, but it's not a big deal because we can wipe the floor with them. It does say it's going to be a Pyrrhic victory, but as long as we fight this and we use our Savage Orc charges, we should absolutely destroy all their gobos. So, not a difficult fight. Fight it. Just go at them. Charge at them. There isn't really too many tactics you need with that army. Get behind them. Hit them in the back with the Wolf Riders. Break their leadership. Easy. And this presents us the opportunity to confederate, but we're actually not going to do this. We are going to release the enemy warlord and take the plus diplomatic relations. Because we want to try and get peace with the Scabby Eye, just so it's someone else for the dwarfs around to focus on. We can get peace. We're going to take it. Nice. So now we have the Scabby Eye as kind of a buffer, a bit of a cushion between us and the dwarves. And if we look at them, you can see that they're at war with Kareza Karak, who is someone that we are going to be going after and that we're at war with as well. So that pretty much does it for the guide of getting you off to a strong start. You've got a province now. You've taken out some orcs. You've made peace with other orcs. Now you're ready to go on to the hard part of the campaign, which is taking out the dwarfs before they get too strong. And again, this is where the kind of variables, like I say, this campaign can be a little bit volatile. It can depend how well Grimgor does for himself. If he gets beaten up by dwarves, that can make your life a bit harder. So there is a bit of luck involved. Going to start to work on the spells for Wurzak's skill points. For the tech, I'm going to go for Healy Mushrooms. Get that extra replenishment to help us keep moving, keep rolling. For the commandment, we're going to take Growth and Obedience, useful for getting to that level 3 settlement in Ekrand and to stabilize the province public order somewhat. And yeah, things are looking nice. We've got our one province. We've got Grunty Mingal as well, just to the south. It's not a great deal of use, but it's there. Just hold on to it for as long as you can. If you lose it, it's no big deal. As long as the border princes don't take it, they can be a problem later on if you let them have a foothold over the ocean on your side of the land. 
They might come over later on. If we can get the dwarves done before that, it'll make life a lot easier, though. So now we're going to look to Barakvar. We're going to come and take out the dwarves. We want to take out Koreza Karak. And hopefully Grimgore can help us with all this, too. Really depends how well he does. Usually he does all right for himself at the moment. I'm not sure he's doing fantastically. He's not at war with Karaza Karak yet. He's only got two settlements, so not doing fantastically yet, but hopefully he will make himself useful. And the good thing about Grimgore is if he goes ahead and expands crazy and takes like 50 provinces, you can just go and find his army and defeat him and then take control of those 50 provinces yourself and confederate him. So there is always that to go for. If you want to let Grimgore kind of do some of the work for you, that is an option. So from that point, I'd say try and get on top of Barakvar as quickly as possible. If you can take out the Barakvar settlement, it'll weaken them quite well. You'll take away their recruiting options quite a bit. So we're going to try and take this out. It says Valiant Defeat, but these sieges are usually quite easy as long as you don't try to beat the dwarfs at their own game. Dwarfs are great at outlasting other people. If you try to wear them down and kill every single dwarf, you're probably going to lose. So go for the victory point, try to take control of it, that little flag in the middle of the map, grab it, then lock the dwarfs out of it, just keep them from getting in there for 200 seconds, and you've got yourself an easy win, and you didn't lose too many boys, you can see there, I didn't lose too much taking out a big dwarf settlement. Now you could raise this and get the extra war point so you get closer to getting your war, but I'm going to occupy this just so it reduces the risk that the dwarves are going to take it back easily, and then I'm kind of back to square one. So I'm going to occupy, although we do want to start working up the war because that war is going to be incredibly important for taking out Karaza Karak, who can be pretty strong by the time you get to them. They might have a stack or two, they might have it in Karaza Karak, and that can be really difficult to deal with. So oh, we're going to need the war. So you can build that up, you can attack some border princes or something to help build the war, raise or sack some of their settlements. Eventually you'll be able to take out Karaza Karak, as I am doing here. I've taken their main settlement, just finishing off what they've got left here. I had a bit of help from Grimgore. And from the Scabii as well, they helped take out Barak Var. So keeping our allies alive, all us orcs working together to get rid of those damn Dawi. And you should end up with something that looks a little bit like this. We've still got our starting province. We've still got Grunty Mingul. We've got Barak Var. We've got our wired up army here. I'm about ready to go and start pushing on the border princes now. All this is taken care of. This is controlled by the Scabii, and that's fine because if I want this at any point, all I have to do is go and find the Scabii leader and beat him up and then confederate him. Got Karaza Karak in this as well. Grimgore's got the other settlement. That's fine by me. Eventually, we'll probably confederate Grimgore somewhere. So anything they have, anything any Greenskins army has, is fine with us. As long as it's not controlled by dwarves or rats, we're good. But Grimgore's doing all right for himself now. He's got eight settlements. Then it's a case of taking out the border princes. And then you need to worry about either Clan Moor's rats from the south or Snitch's rats from the east. Those are the big two worries. If you can control them, you should be able to win this campaign pretty comfortably with a bit of help from your Greenskins bros. So there you go. How to get a good start in Wurzag's campaign. It's not the hardest in the world, but not the easiest either, but mostly because of luck, depending on how the other factions respond and perform. It should be pretty comfy or get a little crazy. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. See you in the future.